The basic structure doctrine is an Indian judicial principle that the Constitution of India has certain basic features that cannot be altered or destroyed through amendments by the Parliament. Key among these basic features, as expounded by its most prominent proponent Justice Hans Raj Khanna, are the fundamental rights granted to individuals by the Constitution. The doctrine thus forms the basis of a limited power of the Supreme Court to review and strike down constitutional amendments enacted by the Parliament which conflict with or seek to alter this basic structure of the Constitution. The basic structure doctrine applies only to constitutional amendments. The basic features of the Constitution have not been explicitly defined by the judiciary, and the claim of any particular feature of the Constitution to be a basic Feature is determined by the court in each case that comes before it. The basic structure doctrine does not apply to ordinary acts of parliament, which must itself be in conformity with the constitution. The Supreme Court's initial position on constitutional amendments was that any part of the constitution was amendable and that the parliament might, by passing a constitution amendment act in compliance with the requirements of Article 368, amend any provision of the constitution, including the fundamental rights and Article 368. The basic features principle was first expounded in 1964, by Justice J.R. Mudholkar in his dissent, in the case of Sajan Singh v. State of Rajasthan. He wrote, it is also a matter for consideration whether making a change in a basic feature of the constitution can be regarded merely as an amendment or would it be, in effect, rewriting a part of the constitution, and if the latter, would it be within the purview of Article 368? In 1967, the Supreme Court reversed its earlier decisions in Golaknath v. State of Punjab. It held that fundamental rights included in Part 3 of the Constitution are given a transcendental position and are beyond the reach of Parliament. It also declared any amendment that takes away or abridges a fundamental right conferred by Part 3 as unconstitutional. By 1973, the basic structure doctrine triumphed in Justice Hans Raj Khanna's judgment in the landmark decision of Kasavananda Bharati v. State of Kerala. Previously, the Supreme Court had held that the power of Parliament to amend the Constitution was unfettered. However, in this landmark ruling, the Court adjudicated that while Parliament has wide powers, it did not have the power to destroy or emasculate the basic elements or fundamental features of the Constitution. Although Kasavananda was decided by a narrow margin of 7 to 6, the basic structure doctrine has since gained widespread acceptance and legitimacy due to subsequent cases and judgments. Primary among these was the imposition of a state of emergency by Indira Gandhi in 1975, and her subsequent attempt to suppress her prosecution through the 39th Amendment. When the Kasavananda case was decided, the underlying apprehension of the majority bench that elected representatives could not be trusted to act responsibly was perceived as unprecedented. However, the passage of the 39th Amendment by the Indian National Congress's majority in central and state legislatures, proved that in fact such apprehension was well-founded. In Indira Nehru Gandhi v. Raj Narain and Minerva Mills v. Union of India, constitution benches of the Supreme Court used the basic structure doctrine to strike down the 39th Amendment and parts of the 42nd Amendment respectively, and paved the way for restoration of Indian democracy. The Supreme Court's position on constitutional amendments laid out in its judgments is that Parliament can amend the Constitution but cannot destroy its basic structure. <laughs> <laughs> Definition The basic features principle was first expounded in 1964, by Justice J.R. Mudholkar in his dissent, in the case of Sajan Singh v. State of Rajasthan. He wrote, it is also a matter for consideration whether making a change in a basic feature of the constitution can be regarded merely as an amendment or would it be, in effect, rewriting a part of the constitution, and if the latter, would it be within the purview of Article 368? Supreme Court declared that the basic structure, features of the constitution is resting on the basic foundation of the constitution. The basic foundation of the Constitution is the dignity and the freedom of its citizens which is of supreme importance and cannot be destroyed by any legislation of the Parliament. The basic features of the Constitution have not been explicitly defined by the judiciary. At least, 20 features have been described as basic or essential 
by the courts in numerous cases, and have been incorporated in the basic structure. In Indira Nehru Gandhi v. Raj Narayan and also in the Minerva Mills case, it was observed that the claim of any particular feature of the constitution to be a basic feature would be determined by the court in each case that comes before it. Some of the features of the constitution termed as basic are listed below. Supremacy of the constitution Rule of law The principle of separation of powers The objectives specified in the preamble to the constitution Judicial review Articles 32 and 226 Federalism including financial liberty of states under Articles 282 and 293 Secularism The sovereign, democratic, republican structure Freedom and dignity of the individual Unity and integrity of the nation The principle of equality, not every feature of equality, but the quintessence of equal justice The essence of other fundamental rights in Part 3 The concept of social and economic justice To build a welfare state, Part 4 in Toto The balance between fundamental rights and directive principles The parliamentary system of government the principle of free and fair elections Limitations upon the amending power conferred by Article 368 Independence of the judiciary Effective access to justice Powers of the Supreme Court under Articles 32, 136, 141, 142 Legislation seeking to nullify the awards made in exercise of the judicial power of the state by arbitration tribunals constituted under an act Welfare state. Topic Background. The Supreme Court's initial position on constitutional amendments was that no part of the Constitution was unamendable, and that the Parliament might, by passing a Constitution Amendment Act in compliance with the requirements of Article 368, amend any provision of the Constitution, including the fundamental rights and Article 368. In Shankari Prasad Singh Deo v. Union of India Air. 1951 SC 458, the Supreme Court unanimously held, "...the terms of Article 368 are perfectly general and empower Parliament to amend the Constitution without any exception whatever." In the context of Article 13, law must be taken to mean rules or regulations made in exercise of ordinary legislative power and not amendments to the Constitution made in exercise of constituent power, with the result that Article 13 does not affect amendments made under Article 368. In Sajan Singh v. State of Rajasthan case citation 1965 air 845 1965 SCR 1933 by a majority of 3 to 2 the supreme court held when article 368 confers on parliament the right to amend the constitution the power in question can be exercised over all the provisions of the constitution it would be unreasonable to hold that the word law in Article 13 2 takes in Constitution Amendment Acts passed under Article 368, in both cases, the power to amend the rights had been upheld on the basis of Article 368. <laughs> Golaknath case In 1967, the Supreme Court reversed its earlier decisions in Golaknath v. State of Punjab. A bench of eleven judges the largest ever at the time of the Supreme Court deliberated as to whether any part of the fundamental rights provisions of the Constitution could be revoked or limited by amendment of the Constitution. The Supreme Court delivered its ruling, by a majority of 6 to 5 on 27 February 1967. The Court held that an amendment of the Constitution is a legislative process, and that an amendment under Article 368 is law. Within the meaning of Article 13 of the Constitution and therefore, if an amendment takes away or abridges a fundamental right conferred by Part 3, it is void. Article 13 2 reads, The state shall not make any law which takes away or abridges the right conferred by this part and any law made in contravention of this clause shall, to the extent of contravention, be void. 
The court also ruled that fundamental rights included in Part Three of the Constitution are given a transcendental position under the Constitution and are kept beyond the reach of Parliament. The court also held that the scheme of the Constitution and the nature of the freedoms it granted incapacitated Parliament from modifying, restricting or impairing fundamental freedoms in Part Three. Parliament passed the 24th Amendment in 1971 to abrogate the Supreme Court ruling in the Golaknath case. It amended the Constitution to provide expressly that Parliament has the power to amend any part of the Constitution including the provisions relating to fundamental rights. This was done by amending Articles 13 and 368 to exclude amendments made under Article 368, from Article 13's prohibition of any law abridging or taking away any of the fundamental rights. Chief Justice Koka Suba Rao writing for the majority held that A law to amend the Constitution is a law for the purposes of Article 13. Article 13 prevents the passing of laws which take away or abridge the fundamental rights provisions. Article 368 does not contain a power to amend the Constitution but only a procedure. The power to amend comes from the normal legislative power of Parliament. Therefore, amendments which take away or abridge the fundamental rights provisions cannot be passed. Topic: <laughs> Kasavananda Bharati case, 1973. Six years later in 1973, the largest ever constitution bench of 13 judges, heard arguments in Kasavananda Bharati v. State of Kerala Case Citation, Air 1973 SC 1461. The Supreme Court reviewed the decision in Golaknath v. State of Punjab, and considered the validity of the 24th, 25th, 26th and 29th Amendments. The court held, by a margin of 7 to 6, that although no part of the Constitution, including fundamental rights, was beyond the amending power of Parliament thus overruling the 1967 case, the basic structure of the Constitution could not be abrogated even by a constitutional amendment." The decision of the judges is complex, consisting of multiple opinions taking up one complete volume in the law reporter, Supreme Court Cases. The findings included the following All of the judges held that the 24th, 25th and 29th Amendments Acts are valid. Ten judges held that Galak Nath's case was wrongly decided and that an amendment to the Constitution was not a law for the purposes of Article 13. Seven judges held that the power of amendment is plenary and can be used to amend all the articles of the Constitution including the fundamental rights. Seven judges held six judges descending on this point that the power to amend does not include the power to alter the basic structure of the Constitution so as to change its identity. Seven judges held two judges dissenting, one leaving this point open that there are no inherent or implied limitations on the power of amendment under Article 368. Nine judges including two dissentients signed a statement of summary for the judgment that reads Galak Nath's case is overruled. Article 368 does not enable Parliament to alter the basic structure or framework of the Constitution. The Constitution 24th Amendment Act, 1971 is valid. Section 2 a and 2 b of the Constitution 25th Amendment Act, 1971 is valid. The first part of Section 3 of the Constitution 25th Amendment Act, 1971 is valid. The second part namely, and no law containing a declaration that it is for giving effect to such policy shall be called in question in any court on the ground that it does not give effect to such policy," is invalid. The Constitution 29th Amendment Act, 1971 is valid, the ruling thus established the principle that the basic structure cannot be amended on the grounds that a power to amend is not a power to destroy. Topic. Defining the basic structure The majority had differing opinions on what the basic structure of the Constitution comprised. Chief Justice Sarv Mitra Sikri, writing for the majority, indicated that the basic structure consists of the following The supremacy of the Constitution A republican and democratic form of government The secular character of the Constitution 
maintenance of the separation of powers. The federal character of the Constitution, Justices Shellett and Grover in their opinion added three features to the Chief Justice's list. The mandate to build a welfare state contained in the directive principles of state policy. Maintenance of the unity and integrity of India. The sovereignty of the country, Justices Hegde and Mukherjee, in their opinion, provided a separate and shorter list. The sovereignty of India. The democratic character of the polity. The unity of the country. Essential features of individual freedoms. The mandate to build a welfare state, Justice Jagan Reddy preferred to look at the preamble, stating that the basic features of the Constitution were laid out by that part of the document, and thus could be represented by a sovereign democratic republic, the provision of social, economic and political justice, liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith and worship, equality of status and opportunity. The Emergency 1975. The Court reaffirmed and applied the Basic Structure Doctrine in Indira Nehru Gandhi v. Raj Narain, popularly known as Election Case. The constitutionality of Article 329A, which had been inserted by the 39th Amendment in 1975 was challenged in this case. Shortly after the imposition of the emergency, a bench of 13 judges was hastily assembled to hear the case. Presided over by Chief Justice Ajit Nath Ray, the court had to determine the degree to which amendments were restricted by the basic structure theory. Ray, who was among the dissenters in the Kasavananda Bharati case, had been promoted to Chief Justice of India on 26 April 1973, superseding three senior judges, Shellett, Grover and Hegde all in the majority in the same case, which was unprecedented in Indian legal history. On November 10 and 11, the team of civil libertarian barristers, led by Nanaboy Palkavala, argued against the Union government's application for reconsideration of the Kasavananda decision. Some of the judges accepted his argument on the very first day, the others on the next. By the end of the second day, the Chief Justice was reduced to a minority of one. On the morning of 12 November, Chief Justice Ray tersely pronounced that the bench was dissolved, and the judges rose. The 39th Amendment attempted, among other provisions, to legitimize the election of Indira Gandhi in 1971. Article 329A put the elections of the Prime Minister and Lok Sabha Speaker outside the purview of the judiciary and provided for determination of disputes concerning their elections by an authority to be set up by a parliamentary law. The Supreme Court struck down clauses 4 and 5 of the Article 329A, which made the existing election law inapplicable to the Prime Minister's and Speaker's election, and declared the pending proceedings in respect of such elections null and void. Topic. Development Constitutional lawyer A. G. Norani notes that the doctrine has now spread far and wide beyond its frontiers, but that the eventual attribution to Dietrich Conrad is absent, who propounded the arguments in a lecture to the law faculty in the Banaras Hindu University. The argument, Norani narrates made way to M. K. Nambayar who read the excerpt out in Golaknath. The note is that in Kasavananda Bharati the dissenting judge, Justic Khanna approved as "...substantially correct." The following observations by Prof. Conrad. Topic evolution of the doctrine The basic structure doctrine was further clarified in Minerva Mills v. Union of India. The 42nd Amendment had been enacted by the government of Indira Gandhi in response to the Kasavananda Bharati judgment in an effort to reduce the power of the judicial review of constitutional amendments by the Supreme Court. In the Minerva Mills case, Nanaboy Palkivala successfully moved the Supreme Court to declare sections 4 and 55 of the 42nd Amendment as unconstitutional. The constitutionality of sections 4 and 55 of the 42nd Amendment were challenged in this case, when Sharan Singh was caretaker Prime Minister. Section 4 of the 42nd Amendment, had amended Article 31c of the Constitution to accord precedence to the directive principles of state policy articulated in Part 4 of the Constitution over the fundamental rights of individuals articulated in Part 3. Section 55 prevented any constitutional amendment from being called in question in any court on any ground. 
It also declared that there would be no limitation whatever on the constituent power of Parliament to amend by way of definition, variation or repeal the provisions of the Constitution. On 31 July 1980, when Indira Gandhi was back in power, the Supreme Court declared sections 4 and 55 of the 42nd Amendment as unconstitutional. It further endorsed and evolved the basic structure doctrine of the Constitution. As had been previously held through the basic structure doctrine in the Kasavananda case, the court ruled that Parliament could not by amending the Constitution convert limited power into an unlimited power as it had purported to do by the 42nd Amendment. In the judgment on Section 55, Chief Justice Yeshwant Vishnu Chandrachud wrote, Since the Constitution had conferred a limited amending power on the Parliament, the Parliament cannot under the exercise of that limited power enlarge that very power into an absolute power. Indeed, a limited amending power is one of the basic features of our constitution and therefore, the limitations on that power can not be destroyed. In other words, Parliament can not, under Article 368, expand its amending power so as to acquire for itself the right to repeal or abrogate the constitution or to destroy its basic and essential features. The Dhani of a limited power cannot by the exercise of that power convert the limited power into an unlimited one. The ruling was widely welcomed in India, and Gandhi did not challenge the verdict. In the judgment on Section 4, Chandrachud wrote, Three articles of our constitution, and only three, stand between the heaven of freedom into which Tagore wanted his country to awake and the abyss of unrestrained power. They are Articles 14, 19 and 21. Article 31c has removed two sides of that golden triangle which affords to the people of this country an assurance that the promise held forth by the preamble will be performed by ushering an egalitarian era through the discipline of fundamental rights, that is, without emasculation of the rights to liberty and equality which alone can help preserve the dignity of the individual. This latter view of Article 31c was questioned, but not overturned, in Sanjeev Coke Manufacturing Co. v. Bharat Cooking Coal Limited case citation, Air 1983 SC 239. The concept of basic structure has since been developed by the Supreme Court in subsequent cases, such as Waman Rao v. Union of India Air 1981 SC 271, Bim Sinji v. Union of India Air 1981 SC 234 SP Gupta V President of India Air 1982 SC 149 known as transfer of judges case SP Sampath Kumar V Union of India Air 1987 SC 386 P Sambamurthy V State of Andhra Pradesh Air 1987 SC 663 Kihoda Halahan V Zakilu and others 1-SCC-309, L. Chandra Kumar v. Union of India and others Air 1997-SC-1125, P. V. Narsimha Rao v. State CBI, SPE Air 1998-SC-2120, I. R. Coelho v. State of Tamil Nadu and others 2007-2-SCC-1, and Raja Rampal v. The humble speaker, Lok Sabha and others, JT 2007, 2 SC 1, known as Cash for Query Case. The Supreme Court's position on constitutional amendments laid out in its judgments is that Parliament can amend the Constitution but cannot destroy its basic structure. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Influence. The influence extends to Commonwealth countries sharing the judicial system with India. Bangladesh The Basic Structure Doctrine was adopted by the Supreme Court of Bangladesh in 1989, by expressly relying on the reasoning in the Kasavananda case, in its ruling on Anwar Hossein Chowdhury v. Bangladesh 41 DLR 1989 app. DIV 165 1989 BLD SPL 1 Topic Malaysia in Malaysia the basic features doctrine was initially found to be inapplicable by the federal court in Fang Chin Hock v Public Prosecutor the court remarked that the Indian constitution was not drafted by mere mortals while the same could not be said for the Malaysian constitution 
The Indian constitution was drafted by a constituent assembly representative of the Indian people in territorial, racial and community terms, while both the Malaysian and Singapore constitutions were enacted by ordinary legislatures. The basic structure doctrine was first cited with approval by the federal court in Obiter Dicta in Sivarasa Rizaya v. Baden Pegum Malaysia, before ultimately being applied by the same court in Semenya Jaya Sdnbhd v. Pentad Bertana Daira Hulu Longgat and Anoar Case and Indira Gandhi A. P. Mutho v. Pengara Jabatan Agama Islam Parak and two Oars and two other cases. In those cases, the federal court held that the vesting of the judicial power of the federation in the civil courts formed part of the basic structure of the constitution, and could not be removed even by constitutional amendment. Singapore. The High Court of Singapore denied the application of the Basic Features Doctrine in Singapore in Teo Soh Lung v. Minister for Home Affairs. Justice Frederick Arthur Chua held that the doctrine was not applicable to the Singapore Constitution. Considering the differences in the making of the Indian and our Constitution, it cannot be said that our Parliament's power to amend our Constitution is limited in the same way as the Indian Parliament's power to amend the Indian Constitution. See also Judicial activism in India Teo Soh Lung v. Minister for Home Affairs in Singapore, the concerned court considered and rejected the applicability of the doctrine. Fang Chin Hock v. Public Prosecutor in Malaysia. Anwar Hossein Chowdhury v. Bangladesh. <laughs>